Hey guys, I'm Adam from the Vangelicos, and today I'm going to try something a little bit different. So, watching the last couple of videos, you maybe heard some music you've never heard before. That's because I've been writing and recording all the stuff we've been using for our recent videos. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit of what that process of setting up the studio, coming up with chord progressions, and putting it all together kind of looks like out wherever we happen to be, which today is Twin Lakes, Colorado in late May. So here we go, I hope you enjoy. All right guys, so I'll take you through this whole process right from the very beginning. So I use a Scarlett 18i6, which is a pretty old um, preamp. And I use that through Logic on my computer as my digital audio workstation. I've got my Roland Juno G connected for things like chords, keyboard, pads. I use that for drum tracks a lot of the time because uh, my acoustic drums don't have a full kit accessible so really no you know symbols and things like that um, and the first step I would usually do is maybe come up with a little chord progression on a guitar or the ukulele maybe on whatever instrument I start with and then from there I'll kind of build it with the rest of the instrument so the structure I'll use kind of starts with a standard song building structure would be like an A section, a B section, and then maybe sometimes I'll throw a C section in there just to kind of transition and create like a full length. Like you end up somewhere around three minutes with that, unless you kind of repeat yourself over and over again, which is totally cool for YouTube music, which is why there's kind of lower standards for it. And you'll see that here, because I'm not very, uh, I don't know, I'm not much of a perfectionist when it comes to making sure everything lines up perfectly because once you build the whole shape of everything, it kind of connects together and it has a little bit more of an authentic sound because of the times when it's not 100% off or not 100% on beat, it makes it more powerful when it all comes together perfectly, which is hopefully most of the time. Anyway, we're gonna start off, I think, with a guitar track that I've been playing around with for a little while. So let's see what that looks like. Here we go, starting in Logic Pro. Oh, it's just Logic now, but we're gonna start that up right now. And hopefully the audio <laughs> isn't too bad because it's a little windy out here, which is something that you're gonna deal with when you're recording outside. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so first thing I've done is I opened up Logic Pro and I added a guitar track and a banjo track. I'm going to start by practicing the chord progression I have for the guitar and then we'll try a couple different things with the banjo and then if we can get both of those to line up pretty good then it'll be pretty easy to build a rhythm section around it and then we can start adding fun things from the keyboard. Alright, so funny story, I forgot that I broke my string recently, I haven't put one on but since we're using the banjo as well, I'm going to go ahead and just play it as a five string guitar with a five string banjo and we'll just see what happens it doesn't matter we're just having fun so let's see how this sounds you got to make sure your instruments are in tune when you're going to be recording a bunch of instruments together that's definitely a fun fact because if one of them's out then the whole thing's going to sound like trash so let's see what we can do with this progression i'm just going to practice it a few times because i'm not 100 percent perfect all the time and uh, i want to just get the rhythm 
and the feel without having that top string also is going to be a little different. So these are the chords. I'm playing in A minor and the reason for that is because I was thinking about adding the flute because um, my Navajo flute is in the key of A or A minor and uh, I don't know if that's going to sound good with guitar or banjo or any of the things we're going to do but again we're just experimenting here to see what we come up with. So we're going on it. Here we go. Well, it's never going to be perfect, so let's just go ahead and record it and see what we can go on to the next step. All right. going to be a short one and I don't want to spend 9,000 years trying to come up with a perfect song for a quick video that I'm just slapping together. So moving on to banjo. All right, let's see if we can do this. another track <laughs> that was the first take I think that was pretty good hopefully all of this is coming out okay including the uh, crazy wind that's blowing around right now all right so let's add some rhythm we'll start out with a nice tambourine and then maybe we'll put a drum track with the keyboard on later I'm not sure if it's gonna need it we'll see check it out moving on to the next track. This is a fun hat. <laughs> okay, that's in there. I can hear it. And let's go ahead and record. Not super happy with that, but we're just gonna keep rolling with it. And if we end up with a pile of garbage at the end, then that's what we end up with. This, you guys are along for the ride. All right, next let's uh, maybe add a little shaker to it. Just keep that rhythm section building. I'm just gonna go. No idea what this rhythm's gonna be. Okay, now we have kind of a foundation. So from there, let's just explore. I think I'll do some chords on the keyboard next. Okay, so the next step, what we're gonna do is we got the keyboard plugged in to input three and four. We're gonna set up a new track for the keyboard. I'll duplicate that track a few times to use for maybe a drum sequence, maybe some sort of the synthy pad thing, maybe another melody line after everything's all said and done, who knows. But that's what we're gonna start. And I'm just gonna do the chord progression. And when we're at this chord progression, I might as well just talk about the structure that I've chosen for this song, which is just gonna be an A section and a B section. And the B section is really simplified. It's just an expanded version of the A section. So my four chords are A minor, E minor, G major, and then D minor. And we're just gonna repeat that once through. And then the second time through, leave out the D minor. And there are just gonna be one time, one, uh, 
half a measure for each one of those at first. And then for this B section, it's just gonna be expanded to a full measure for each one of those. So real simple. Um, it's not a complicated song. I kind of wanted to keep it simple for this video just so that it, I didn't have to re-record things 150 times and I didn't have to do one live take each time that was three minutes long. So a quick one just to see how it works out and if it goes well, then we'll go a little deeper next time. All right, so let's just do the chords now and then we'll see what comes up next. The screen for my keyboard doesn't work at all, so I kind of have to just go through and pick sounds that I want and then record them analog. Uh, another thing, you probably won't be able to hear what I'm doing other than little clicks and clacks, so I'll try to add them afterwards, but if not, then you'll just get to hear it in the final product. So what I'm going to do just right now is try to figure out what sort of inversions I want to use for each chord and how I'm going to kind of articulate just the basic A minor, uh, E minor, C major, and D minor. And I can probably tell the wind is bothering the audio right now, so it won't really matter that you can't hear it. Great, so let's see. So let's make a nice sound. That's just piano sound. So I'm going to click vocal slash pad right now, and I'm just going to go through and pick a sound one by one that I kind of like. Ooh, that's a little aggressive. Yeah, that's light and fluffy. So there's a lot of different options here and this can really change the flavor of this entire song. So I might keep it, I might throw it away. We'll see. Yeah, no, it's a mess. That's kind of nice. All right, this is totally gonna change the vibe of the song, but we're going weird with it. So let's see. All right, I'm gonna record. Hopefully I get it right. This is where I do repeat a lot. And if you're wondering what this blanket is for, it's covering up my computer so all this dust that's kind of blowing through here isn't gonna get all in stuff. Okay, you couldn't hear that, but I totally messed it up. <laughs> I'm gonna delete it, try again. It does sound a little cool though, if I can play it right. I guess so. <laughs> Let's just move on to the next track. <laughs> Oh god, we're having fun. Okay, so the next section I'm going to record is going to be the drum track. And I'm going to keep that really, really simple because I don't want it to overwhelm anything. Uh, and I also want to sort of take it almost completely out and minimize it for the second section so that other instruments have some more room to sort of explore and it won't get a little over muddled and a little bit too pushed up. So, real simple drum beat. Let's see if we can record that. Let's go ahead and move on to uh, the flute part, how maybe. How maybe. <laughs> I think we're gonna be finishing this one up pretty soon and you'll get what you get. And yeah, I guess I'm kind of running out of steam here. Okay. Let's uh, try this out. As you can see, the sun is changing. We're getting a little bit of a different angle here. I have no idea if this flute is gonna work on this song. Honestly, it doesn't sound so far like it's going to, but you never know what you're gonna get. So it should be in key, and I'm just gonna do one track through, unless it's like really good, and then I'll do another one that's a little bit better. But first of all, I'm just gonna try it out like this, and hopefully after a little bit of reverb and a little bit of mixing and mastering, this will all come out together. I think this might be the last track that I'm gonna record for this, and then we'll see what the final product looks like. All right, so let's give it a go, and without further ado. By the way, in case anybody is interested, I none of this has been recorded with a metronome, so everything kind of has to play together with the sort of feeling of that first track. And I wouldn't say that that was 100% perfect tempo or anything like that, but it kind of builds and slows back down, and it gives it a little bit more of a natural feeling to it if you can manage to keep playing together, even with sort of a... I believe they call it tempo rubato. Anyway, uh, let's record this flute. I'm going to go 
go with it. I think it's kind of awesome, actually. All right, so at this point, it's just mixing and mastering, and uh, I'll see what the final product comes out to be. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think I'll probably do one more little thing, and that'll be it. I hope you uh, had fun, because I'm probably going to try to do this more if you like it. And if you don't, then fuck you, I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> anyway, bye. One, two, three, four.